Hello, everybody. This is Purge. Bring you guys a first-person replay commentary, and I am playing Chaos Knight. I hear that I haven't made a replay of it in so long. Uh, two people tweeted me about it yesterday, and I finally... This wasn't the first time I tried to make a Chaos Knight game, honestly. I've probably played about four in the last two or three weeks, I think. The first one I played last night ended up in us feeding, because they had like a ridiculously strong tri lane, and we had a crap dual lane, and um, then we had a lever, so luckily I got we got to abandon it without getting an abandon. That was sweet. And then I played another one, and I made things work. So... A little bit of an update, sorry about the late uploads the last two nights. Uh, I've been kind of busy playing a lot and doing other things. Um, I joined an uh, amateur team recently that's been kind of playing a lot in the last week. We played in Sunday Evening Cup Series, also known as Sex. Uh, it's a North American tournament, and we got top 16 of the 60-person bracket. It was like 50-some people signed up or something. We lost to the winners, actually. It was Aosin's new team, which is Aosin, Relic, Last Day Magic, and two other guys that I don't know. But we lost to them, and then they said they had it easy after us. So in a way, we almost got second place. Pretty much. Um, but they deserve to beat us. We had some mistakes and stuff. I'm um, playing offlane for them. I won't give you guys that much information about it. I might upload replays and do casts while playing with them sometimes. Well, I, I'll probably do replay analyzation or replay commentaries with them if I ever do. But uh, I guess I should inform you guys because I'm sure you're interested. But um, mostly we just scrim. I had to wake up at 9 a.m. this morning so we could play. We just got done scrimming. So I was like, what? five hours of playing dota or something like that i think we played like four games we lost almost all of them so it was a good day for learning though and so far the team dynamics are not that bad everybody's taking cri uh, criticism pretty constructively so it's going okay one game i fed syllabar so bad i went like one in seven it was it was like the worst syllabar feed i've done in so long we tried to do an offlane syllabar and it just did not fucking work it just wrecked me they had a crystal maiden i don't want to talk about it anymore i kind of do but i don't okay let's talk about chaos knight so Chaos Knight as a hero is more or less not popular anymore. He's he's honestly just not even played uh, as a carry at all anymore since the latest nerf to Wisp. If you nerf Wisp, you also nerf Chaos Knight. And the nerf to Wisp that happened was that the Tether Stun no longer uh, stuns. It actually does the slow now. So that means that when you use Reality Rift... Oh, I guess I'll explain that in a second, but... Oops, I want player perspective. Let me just explain his skills quick, and then I'll talk about Wisp. His first skill is his first skill is a ranged stun that has a pretty low projectile speed, but it stuns a variable rate. As you guys can see, there's a minimum stun and there's a maximum stun. It also does damage that scales. Um, essentially, uh, oops, I'm gonna continue finishing his skill. Uh, Reality Rift is an ability that basically pulls your opponent and yourself to a halfway point. So you use it on an opponent. You come up to him, and he comes halfway to you, and then you hit him for bonus damage. It's a pretty low cooldown, so you can use this often. It also has the benefit that if you have any illusions that are close by, it'll also teleport your illusions to that hero as well. So it basically helps you do a lot of damage output and um, re-jump on heroes when, you're, when your ulti is available. So it's pretty strong. Uh, his third skill is a 10% chance at a huge crit. It does 300% at level 4, which is really solid. And his ulti is called Phantasm, and it splits himself into illusions. The important part is the illusions actually do full damage, and there's very 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 few illusions that do that high of damage the only ones that other ones that i'm thinking of are the wall of replica from darkseer so that is the major difference so basically chaos knight has a pretty good skill set he has really good late 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 game potential but his mid game and his mid to late is usually a bit weak uh, that might be a little confusing to you because like why would he be good insanely late but not be good in the mid late it's because um, most people focus on mid game items as chaos knight so that they can be good in the mid game um, and also, you kind of need a ridiculous crap load of items for him to be really, really good late. And the main reason that he's super good late is because if you get a ton of strength items and your illusions hit for 100%, then all of a sudden, you're basically quadrupling your damage and they can crit on top of that. So it's just really good. Um, we should be able to get a kill on this Magnus here. Um, I have a stun. He also has Shockwave, very importantly. So if we get a Burrow Strike from the Sand King, we should get a kill. For now, I was just focusing on the last hits because I was actually really hoping he would come up to the lane. And I got lucky and I got a two second stun on him, so this should give us a bunch more right clicks on him. And we do end up getting the first blood. So, really good for us. Abaddon got the kill with the shield. So, a nice start. First problem with Cast Knight. Well, let's talk about why Wisp is not as good with him before. The reason Wisp is so good with Cast Knight, and I think the last time I played Cast Knight was with Wisp. I might be mistaken, but. Uh, that's because when Wisp is tethered to Chaos Knight and he uses a Reality Rift, the positioning of Chaos Knight is such that the Wisp tether would immediately stun. That means as soon as you cast Reality Rift, which is a very, very fast cast animation, 
you're basically stunning your target, and then after the Wisp Tether ends, you cast Chaos Bolt. So basically you get a immediate stun from Tether, and then immediately you throw a Chaos Bolt, and usually that's going to be a hero kill. And then you can just teleport around the map, and Chaos Link can kind of just snowball from getting hero kills. He doesn't have to worry about regen items, because the Wisp can constantly keep his HP up using Bottle or Urns and stuff like that. And it kind of just turns Chaos Knight into a ganking machine that can snowball pretty well. So this was the most common use of Chaos Knight as well as Wisp for a very long time. In fact, if you look at replays of TI2, I believe Wisp was... Uh, I don't remember if he was played that much in TI2. I guess he was. He was played with Tiny. I might be mistaken in a couple things, but the only time Cast Knight was being played, for sure, was with Wisp. So I kind of have to play this differently now. Um, again, Wisp does still work with Chaos Knight, but it's not nearly as good because it's a lot easier for people to react. It's kind of like how Spear Breaker was in um, Opinus. It's just like, it, it was so difficult to react to him very quickly, basically. It was a mistake for me to reality rift there because um, I didn't have enough mana for the uh, chaos bolt, but I did pull my attack back to make sure that I got the last hit there just to give me a little bit more gold. So, first things first. Chaos Knight's number one problem is mana. He has huge mana problems. Um, and this is because his int gain is really bad and you need uh, like 100 or 210 mana to cast a chaos bolt as well as a reality rift. This may seem a little unfair to the hero because it makes the hero a lot weaker, but if you think about it, there's very, very few carries that actually have hard disables, especially not ones that are on low cooldown like this, because it basically means the hero can actually gank if he really wants to. It's kind of similar to what Skeleton King can do, for example. You have a little bit of mana, and all of a sudden your carry can do really good uh, tri lane contribution, for example. So it's actually really good um, to have Chaos Bolt. So to compensate this slightly, I decided to play my build slightly differently. I grabbed the Soul Ring. Now, most of the time, you never see a Soul Ring on a Chaos Knight. He mostly just focuses on free farm. You get a Treads, you get maybe a Wand, and you get a Drum. And the reason you get Drum is it makes all of your illusions faster, it makes your hero faster, gives you a lot of int, and all the uh, all the stats apply to your illusions. So the agility gives your illusions attack speed, the strength gives them damage and HP, and the int one will help you cast a little bit later when you're having mana problems because of like Reality Rift and Chaos Bolt and stuff like that. So. Um, I decided to not go that build because I figured people are a lot more dynamic. There's a lot more team fighting going on in Dota right now because of the patch changes. So I wanted to get a Soul Ring so that I could basically guarantee that I could Chaos Bolt all the time whenever I wanted and actually contribute to the lanes basically. So I figured that would be important. Unfortunately, I'm going to miss the last hit here, but I wanted to pick up the Shared Tango. Missed that one too. But now that I have Soul Ring, basically every time that the Magnus comes up, I can actually use Soul Ring, I can Reality Rift, and I can throw a stun immediately afterwards. And that should at least set up some kind of a kill. Or at least uh, harass him a bunch. Like, I could do 300 damage with that combo, and I'll take 150 from the Soul Ring itself, but I've got enough regen right now, and I have a pretty good farm advantage right now that it's not really that bothersome to me. So... Uh, the other item that I wanted to pick up this game is a Vanguard. Uh, it's not an item that is very often thought of as good, but I'm really happy to see more people throwing it into their builds and stuff. I think the, the big nerf of Tranquil Boots really made Vanguard a viable option, or maybe not a viable option, but an option that is kind of necessary sometimes. Um, and, and oftentimes Vanguard is actually pretty useful for a lot of reasons. And in my opinion, uh, on Chaos Knight, it's really not a bad item at all. Um, especially when you get it with a Soaring, because if you think about it this way, if I get a Vanguard, I probably don't want to get a Drum instead, because I'll have survivability from the Vanguard. So I can compensate the lack of mana by getting a Soaring. And obviously, it does cost me about a thousand more than a Vanguard does, um, or than a Drum does, for example. See, so like right there, I can pull him forward, I can throw a stun, I did one damage, and I actually got really lucky on the nuke amount. Well, I didn't get lucky. Um, it does more damage if you stun for a low duration. I got lucky on the stun, so it did high damage. I think I did like 200 magic damage there, or something like that. I'd have to rewatch it, but... But anyways, the reason I like getting the Vanguard is, number one, it counteracts the Soul Ring HP degen, so the HP that I'm losing by using a Soul Ring is going to be quickly compensated by a Vanguard. Um, a Vanguard and a Soul Ring together provides a lot of mana regen over time. Again, I'm just going to combo this guy briefly. I can always salve up if I really need to. Um, so, counteracts is Soul Ring HP regen. If I get gone on, I have a ton of HP regen from the Soul Ring together with the Vanguard. Um, and it uh, gives a lot of HP to my illusions. And I believe damage block works for illusions. I might be wrong in this. Gods, do you know by any chance? Do your illusions damage block if you have like a South Shield or a Vanguard? I feel like they might. They do? Okay. Okay. That's, I think they do. I'm pretty sure. I haven't checked in a long time, but. Alright, no confirmation on that one, guys, but 
I think it does. I'm, I'm sure I'll see it maybe at some point during this game. I'll just keep an eye out for it and see if they damage block. But if they do, it actually makes illusions a lot more survivable. It's definitely a mechanics question. A lot of people don't know very much mechanics, but it's really hard to know all the mechanics. Okay, so fast treads with soul ring. Um, you could argue I could grab Vanguard first, but I want attack speed. Attack speed is really important, and I can also tread switch as well. Uh, treads, I think, is pretty much necessary in Chaos Knight, and tread switching is really, really important on him as well. His mana pool is so low that if you increase his int by 8 before you cast, you're giving you're getting a lot more mana out of your abilities. By the way, I was playing the game with uh, Aosin, he was playing mid. He had a, he had a pretty rough start, so... Um, but yeah, Treads is an absolute go-to. Soaring is pretty nice on a hero like this. And Soaring as an item is now more valuable than it was since the last patch. And that's just because there's so much more action going on. You can't necessarily just get away with not buying a mana regen item anymore. If you are going to be contested, which is very often now. Like, it's not rare, even at my MMR, to be contested in my lane. So, grabbing the Soaring now is, is pretty useful. So I've grabbed a TP now, just in case there's a gank somewhere. That way I can try to help out my allies. Again, I do have a stun, so uh, to cover my allies, this is pretty important. Top tower is under attack. Yeah, even if the uh, damage block doesn't work on a Vanguard for your illusions, they do still get the total HP increase. And of course, since you're getting all the HP regen, you're likely to be at full HP when you use your illusions instead. So... There's a lot of good things about Vanguard. It is pretty expensive at 2,000 gold, and you could make the argument, why not buy the Vitality Booster and just sit on it until a heart? Um, and my, my response to that is, I just want to have like a ton of HP regen immediately. A lot of people really like buying um, Armlet as, instead as well, because Armlet gives a bunch of damage and gives HP and regen and all that good stuff, but I'm still a big fan of the Vanguard. I think it's very useful. It allows you to be really, really active early, and you can keep fighting and farming even after a team fight ends. So again, I'm going to spend mana again. I get a 4 second stun on him. That was pretty lucky. I was kind of waiting for him to skewer. And he did a last second. He didn't want to skewer because I, he knew that I was going to reality rift him back. So he played it safe. And it was a bit too late. I, yeah, he just mostly got unlucky because I got a 4 second stun. So I purchased my Vitality Booster from the Secret Shop. I used the Courier for this one. Let's so be a little careful about the Courier. Magnus can't kill it, it'll be fine. Just a crappy melee here, guys. Alright, the reason I bought the Vitality Booster first is I just wanted to increase my burst HP. I think this is a fine choice. I didn't really need the HP regen because I already have a soul ring. So for now, just grabbing the vitality booster is okay. I had to block the tower from at least one hit there. Um, the tower will aggro to a hero or a unit over the courier any day. So um, just running into tower range was something that I kind of needed to do there to prevent, prevent it from dying. But that was a little bit easy. I knew Storm Spirit was there. We were communi communicating on Skype, which is why I went. Otherwise, I maybe wouldn't have gone in there because I did end up having to take a lot of tower damage to... Uh, be able to survive that, so. But we did get the kill, so it was all pretty good. Kind of committing on killing this tower. Now that the new creep wave came in, this will be fine. We'll be able to get this. This should allow me to get my Vanguard. So, there we go. Okay. So, Vanguard will be finished. I could have made an armlet with a bit more gold, but this gives you a lot more tankiness, which is something I was interested in. Um, armlet costs about 2700. I'm gonna go fight here. I'm gonna soul ring as well, because even if they do end up disabling me, my survivability is still really, really high at this point. And that's something you also have to understand about the Vanguard. Even though I only had 500 HP, the HP of everybody else in the game, 700 HP, 
line has like 700 HP at max. So even though I was still really low there, I'm still getting 10 HP per second. And there's an 80% chance when they right click me that it's going to block 40 damage, which if you look at Lion's damage right now, that's 60% of his total damage output. So there's a very good chance that he's basically going to be able to throw nukes and nothing else on me. So I knew that I was pretty safe going on that kill, even if um, it was a little scary with my lower HP. If I had an armlet, would I still have gotten the kill? Probably, but I felt a lot safer defensively by having the Vanguard. So... And again, here's another circumstance that I can go on. I maybe shouldn't have spent Soul Ring on this. I probably should have just tread switched, I think. It was a little greedy of me because there was a whole creep wave. See, I did a bunch of bonus damage with the Reality Rift. So I got pretty low, but I'm not going to die. Again, I, I knew I could play aggressive there because the creeps were very likely to get their damage reduced. And Magnus as well was playing an offlane, so he was at an EXP disadvantage, which meant that as a whole... I was fairly survivable. I'm going to tread switch to int right now so it lowers my HP, so my HP regen over time as it does a higher percentage of my total. This gives me like a very, very small payoff over a long period of time. So Radiance don't think that this is making a huge difference, but it does help. And the other really, really nice thing about Vanguard is it gives you a ton of HP regen over time. It gives you six. It's only slightly more than an armlet, but um, even still, I don't have to go back to base. And that's the nice thing about the soaring with in, in combination with it. I never have to go back to base. I can just sit in lane. I can continue to last it. It will keep me open to getting ganked. So during this time period, I was a little scared of somebody like a puck coming from the jungle and trying to kill me. But um, I could just continue last sitting, which is good for me. So, And I have a bunch of kills. I actually have the most last hits in the game. So even, even with this not going the best, it's still going pretty well. What's the alchemist doing? He's died once, but he's having last hitting troubles. He's only got 48, so he's quite a bit behind me. The alchemist did not perform very well this game. So at this point, I had to decide what I wanted to get. I could have maybe made an armlet still, uh, because armlet plus vanguard would be tons of HP regen and giving me a lot of damage. Another reason armlet is so good on Chaos Knight and why I keep bringing it up is that when you activate it, it gives you a bunch of bonus strength. And when you have bonus strength and you use illusions, this means your illusions have all this bonus damage. I made a mistake here. Unfortunately, the courier gave me my Ironwood branch back. And I believe I just realized this. So we're just going to throw a stun here. And Storm will come in and we get another really, really easy kill here. So, again, just rinse, repeat. I have a carry. I can stun every 14 seconds. And this allows us for super, super easy ganks. And it was only here that I realized that my courier was gone. So that was too bad. You do always want to max Chaos Bolt first and then follow that up with Reality Rift. You always want to get your Phantasm late. There's very, very few circumstances where you would get your ulti at 6. And this is for two reasons. Number one, your mana pool is tiny. Like, I have a Soaring right now, but if you look at my mana pool that's not um, adjusted at all by stat items other than the Ironwood branch, my mana pool is horrible. Which means that if you use 125 mana, it used to be worse. It was recently buffed, so it costs less mana now. Um, if you end up using Phantasm, for example... Uh, it ends up putting you pretty far behind in terms of mana, and nobody really hits hard early game anyways, and you don't have that many strength items, so right now I hit kind of hard because I'm starting to get my crit levels, but previous to the previous to picking up the Chaos Strike, it's just not use, uh, not worth it using your Phantasm, and in fact, in most situations, I don't even recommend using Phantasm until you have the level 2 of it. Um, unless you can dodge spells with it, things like that, but um, largely it's not really that useful. I'm going to pull this range creep back because I don't like where the creep equilibrium is because uh, someone could easily TP and I could get ganked here. So it might cost me a last hit. Yep, does end up costing me a last hit. And my next item that I'm going to be picking up, I'm really far ahead this game. I have, I'm 4 0 and 2 and I probably have the highest GPM. Yeah, I have the highest net worth right now, so things are going really well for me. But I pretty much have to get a BKB. I'll be trying to show up to this fight here. ulti on this. Luckily I did land my stun at least. Luckily we're able still to right we we're still able to right click them down. So that worked okay. Not too bad of a fight. I maybe should have stunned the lion before I ultied. It's kinda hard to say. They have a ton of stuns this game and this is why I had to make a BKB because I knew this was gonna happen a lot. They have a Lion stun, they have a Jakiro stun, they have an Elk stun, they have Disables from Puck, and they have an RP as well. Every single one of their heroes can deal with me. It's very frustrating. 
And this is one of the problems with picking Chaos Knight very early. I don't know if this is a random draft or, a, or an all pick or not, but... Well. Chaos Knight is basically countered by AoE and stuns, especially ones that can hit the ground. And that's basically because uh, when you use your Phantasm, you get this big target on your head where everybody's like, Hey look, there's all of these illusions, I want to stun them and do damage. And in fact, the best support against Chaos Knight in the whole game, in my opinion, is Jakiro, and they have that hero. That's because he can throw an Ice Path on whoever I go on, he can Dual Breath me, and he can also Liquid Fire, which means that it reduces the attack speed of myself and my illusions, so it's all pretty useful. Right clicking felt good, guys. Really wanted to stun this guy. That is a good kill. So everything's going really well for me. You know, if I would be using Armlet, it does give you a lot more damage and burst damage by far. But the problem is just that as you fight, the amount of damage that you take from it is just so massive. You lose like 40 HP per second while you use an armlet, so it does give you a lot more damage, but in long elongated team fights like that, it could end up being my downfall. Or if I activate armlet and they just chain stun me for 10 seconds, I end up taking 400 damage from the armlet in the first place, and it can end up costing me more than ends up being useful. So I'm not always a huge fan of uh, of the armlet. And in this game, I, I really felt good with the Vanguard. I really did. Now I've got BKB picked up, so I'm insanely strong right now. I've got eight kills. This is ridiculous. This is actually ridiculous. We didn't see them TP in while we were playing here. I should have BKB'd right there. So I completely messed up that fight. If I just would have BKB'd, I would have killed at least two or three guys, guaranteed. I would have killed Lion, 100%. I would have ultied, and I would have killed Lion with a reality rift and a stun. And then I would have changed targets, and I maybe would have killed the second guy. Possibly. It's very likely the Magnus would have RP'd me as well. But I wouldn't have lost all my HP to the, the Macro Pyre as well as the Dual Breath. So that slightly late BKB not only gave them a crap load of gold. How much gold did they get? They I split 1,000 gold between... Three heroes, Lion, Magnus, as well as Puck. Actually, Lion, Magnus, and Puck, I think, at least. So, I just lost a ton of gold from that. Well, I didn't lose that much gold, I believe, because, um, is this all reliable? Yeah, I did lose some gold. I definitely lost some gold, but I don't think I lost an insane amount. Because I just bought my BKB right before that fight. So. And now, unfortunately, I don't have my BKB, so... Luckily, we do have an Abaddon, so if I can actually disable anybody, it would be good. And we did notice that the Alchemist was uh, stunning here. And unfortunately, the uh, Abaddon went forward. I kind of wanted to sit back and force him to stun himself before he went in, but it didn't really work out like that. I just decided to ulti this because I really wanted to kill the Alchemist, and it ends up working out. I had to Soul Ring for that, but it's all good. And as you guys can see, my illusions are hitting really hard. So. If you don't know how much my illusions are hitting for, they're hitting for this base number here, this white number, the 117. The plus 24 is the 24 damage that I'm getting from the black king bar, which says plus 24. But the strength, the treads, and this little ironwood branch are making my illusions all hit harder. So all of that stuff together is really nice. Missed my last hit. Everybody else, uh, or the creeps got it, which is not good. So the items that I've made are basically completely focused on giving me a really strong mid game. I have a lot of survivability. I have a lot of tankiness, and um, I have a Black King bar. Unfortunately, these aren't really farming items, number one. They're basically just team fighting items, so it kind of focuses me to play more of a really aggressive team fight style where I have to like fight, and I don't really passive farm much. There's been less than five seconds at a time where I've stopped attacking, basically, and that should be okay for us. We did see the Alchemist here. We had a ward. So all we needed to do was we needed the Sand King to stun first because it's instant stun. We don't want him to get his ulti off. So I told him to stun first, here it comes, and I'm going to throw the stun, and that will be a kill. And that was absolutely appropriate use of the epicenter, because we killed the enemy carry, and we got a reliable kill. As soon as I landed my stun, we knew that we, we were going to be able to pick him up. I threw my stun here, I should have BKB'd that probably. On the bright side, I didn't take that much damage, so I should be able to clean this up. 
And another stun should all be good. And now I can fight the puck. And I really don't have to worry about fighting him too much. I'm going to pull him back and he'll blink. Nicely done by him. If he doesn't take player-based damage, by the way, the, the Reality Rift only does damage when I hit, not when I do the actual Rift. So despite pulling him back, he still had the chance to blink and he did blink. So that was nicely done by him. But again, I got low HP. I still wasn't scared because I knew that if Puck was going to kill me, his total nuke combo was going to do maybe 700 points of damage. And from there, he's got to right click me down. And he just simply wasn't going to be able to do that. So despite my BKB being a little late, I was still able to kill two heroes. I got the Jakiro as well as the line. So I further cement my EXP and farm lead. And very importantly, I have my crit maxed out now. So even though I don't have that many damage items, I still actually hit pretty hard. Because if I get a crit off in the fight, 500 physical damage and they're gonna be in some trouble so this is all good and actually the aggressive wards that were placed were really well done by our supports this game because this means that if they end up shifting towards our side of the jungle or towards their side of the jungle actually if they end up coming into their jungle or at least the three important camps they're very unlikely gonna survive this had another kill in the alchemist here which pretty much means that he's not gonna be able to come back at all this game more or less that's not true though, it is an alchemist. Alchemist is like, definitely has huge farming potential, especially with a, a, a blade mail, or a battle fury, that other B word. So when you have this big of an advantage in terms of getting kills, and you have a very tanky carry, like Chaos Knight, I can basically just sit in their jungle. If they want to gank me, they can, and they can definitely do it successfully if they chain stun me until I die. But if I'm able to get the BKB, the BKB off, my farm and EXP is in a position where if I get the BKB off, I'm going to kill some supports, guaranteed. Because I have a hard stun, and I have a lot of chase, and I have a lot of ways to stay survivable and stuff. So, the next item I purchased was a Reaver. Um, and the Reaver was bought with the purpose of stacking more strength so that I had more survivability. This will make my illusions harder to kill. It'll give them another 25 damage, and it's going to make me crit harder as well. So, it's finally time to drop my Ironwood Branch. Very, very sad. So, I get a 24 strength increase. I now have 2,500 HP. And there are a lot of heroes bought that I do not want to fight. I maybe could 1v4 this, honestly. If I came from the darkness while I, after I ultied and then I jumped on them and was able to disable one guy. Oh, they smoked, actually. They ran right into Aosin. He bought back and he said, fight this. So this is why I waited a bit to come back into the fight. I tried to save my BKB here. After he RP'd me, I knew that I would have to commit to it, though. It's a nice stun on my illusions, which meant that my ulti is pretty much wasted. My BKB has now run out, but we did get the uh, line at least. So, one okay. I maybe should have just stunned the Alchemist. I, d I tried to be greedy and just reality rift him down. If I would have stunned him instead, I maybe could have just gone after the line immediately afterwards, and my illusions maybe would have survived. The Alchemist threw a nice stun on the, the illusions, though. Um... They, they seriously have like the best hero counters to Chaos Knight ever. It's ridiculous. The amount of AoE stuns they have is crazy. In a normal circumstance, you're playing against like a Crystal Maiden or like a Naga or something, and they can't just like AoE stun your illusions constantly. Like my illusions did nothing in that fight other than soak up damage. And they soaked up damage really well though, and that's because I have so much HP. So I have a Vanguard and I have a Reaver. Reaver gives 500, Vanguard gives 250, the BKB gives 190, so I just have a ton of extra survivability from it. My attack speed's pretty weak right here, but everything is going really well. I'm definitely ahead of my farm curve. Um, another important thing is that, uh, or what what I'm going to do with my item build here is I'm going to go for a Satanic. Um, I can talk about that choice later, but the goal is that I didn't want to get a heart. A heart is really good for Chaos Knight because it gives you 40 strength, which is 40 damage for your illusions. But I already had plenty HP regen uh, from the Vanguard and the Soul Ring, so I didn't really feel like I needed a heart too badly. So I decided to go for a Satanic instead, that way, especially since I'm so far ahead in terms of farm, that if I just get some lifesteal, surely I can just stay alive forever, was kind of my thought. A Satanic this early, my damage is pretty good, it's not amazing, but I thought it was going to be good enough where a Satanic would just be fantastic. So. Sanjinyasha is not the worst Chaos Knight item, it's not too bad, uh, especially if I was really far ahead if I got a Sanjinyasha here, that may have been a better choice. Um, the movement speed would be nice. The agility applies to making my illusions attack faster and making my hero run faster. Uh, Chaos Knight has one of the highest base movement speeds in the game, so grabbing a Yasha on him is not too bad. But largely, Sanjin Yasha barely increases your survivability and it doesn't give you very much damage, so it's 
kind of a bad item generally. I wouldn't say it's a good Chaos Knight item. I would prefer it on a lot of other heroes over him. So I have a Satanic finished. This doesn't increase my damage that much. Um, it does give me plus 20 from the Helm of the Dominator and it also gives me five armor. That's gonna be the difference in the item. Get a three second stun over here. This is really close by the, the Darkseer. I thought the Darkseer was gonna die for this. And once he gets Orchided, we know that we can kill that guy. Should be able to continue chasing this. There's a stun on the uh, Alchemist, which guarantees that we'll be able to catch up. And then I crit him for 800. It was good. So we should be able to go high ground, possibly push. Um, I can soul ring and use my ulti. There's three heroes dead right now. There's a good shot of us being able to take this. So those arcanes were so good there, because I was almost out of mana. Radiance top tower is under attack. Yeah, it, uh, the Jakira was too far forward. You have to be so careful against a Chaos Knight, because it's very easy for me to just reality rift to support. Radiance top tower has fallen. I think it was about here I decided to Radiance do Phantasm, if I'm not mistaken. Radiance top barracks are under attack. Guess not. Radiance top barracks has fallen. I'm mostly just checking for supports occasionally. Radiance top barracks. Want to see if they're gonna think about initiating. I would love to take mid in this circumstance, but unfortunately, our their tier two tower is still up, so we can't do that. Then we said kill all their moonwells. I do hit really hard though, and the Vlad's pick up from the. Uh, from the Abaddon can be pretty useful as well. I was hoping I could do something fancy, like put us both on the low ground, but it didn't happen. It's a really nice uh, RP. I did BKB this. The ice paths just messed everything up there. That was really good. So this is basically the start of me realizing that they have a billion stuns. Like, literally a billion stuns. So yeah, if you get chainstone, Satanic does nothing. And this is what I realized here. And then I said, maybe I shouldn't have spent 6,000 gold on an item that pretty much only gives me 25 strength and a little damage output, so. Uh, my BKB is not lasting very long anymore because I've already used it like three times. I think I'm already down to like a seven second or something. So instead, I think I maybe should have gotten maybe a heart because it would have given me an extra 500 HP. Maybe I would have survived. It's kind of hard to say. Sanji Yasha wouldn't be the most garbage item, but it'd be kind of bad. Um, I actually thought uh, the item that I was getting after Satanic was actually going to be a, uh, a Scotty. Scotty is actually a pretty good item for Chaos Knight. Um, number one, it gives you almost as much HP as a heart. I believe it's the second highest HP item in the game. A first single item at least. So if you want a ton of HP, Scotty is really good. The other really nice thing about Scotty is it gives me 25 agility, which is 25 attack speed for myself and my illusions. So the agility is really nice. It also translates to like... Um, 7, 14, it's like 3, 3 and a half armor, not too horrible. Um, and also, it gives me 25 int, and I still am having a bit of mana problems, so finishing a Scotty wouldn't be that bad either. So that was what I planned to do after the Satanic. It does it does not override the Lifesteal Orb, so I could get a Slow as well as a Lifesteal. But honestly, I, I wouldn't be purchasing as much for the utility, I'd mostly be buying it just because it's nice to have all those stats in one item. So, I dare say I should have gone Scotty after the Vanguard instead of the Satanic, I think it would have done a lot more. I would have had the same HP, but I would have had a lot of attack speed, and I would have had a lot more int. So, 
I don't know if there was ever a moment in this game where the Satanic honestly saved me. So, um, when they had this many stuns, it wasn't worth it. If they had a lot less stuns, Satanic would definitely be worth it. But my BKB is too low now to really allow Satanic to do much. Yeah, I'm already down to six seconds, so I don't really have a big timing window to life steal. So we should be able to take this tier two. I kind of wanted to jump on this puck. This is a little greedy for me. Luckily I'm extremely tanky. They probably should have maybe not burned everything to heal me. I, I could have just used a Satanic on a creep wave or something like that and I could have gotten healed from it. So I think that might have been a better choice. I really kind of wanted to look for a fight here, basically. I was playing pretty aggressive. Doesn't look like we're going to get the tower, but we do 4 seconds to the puck. I did get my BKB off here. Fortunately, I ulti on top of an illusion. I th really thought that I was going to be able to kill the puck. And again, I reality riff right on top of the ice path. I just got really unlucky, honestly. It's like whenever I decided to go in, there's Satanic, here comes guys. I think I should have committed to the Alchemist, that was a mistake. I didn't think about it at the time, but I definitely should have committed to the Alchemist. I would have killed him 100%. I stopped hitting him though, I changed targets to the, uh, the Jakiro, but he's still really squishy actually. Alchemist doesn't have any armor items yet, so that was a mistake. Should have killed him. I could have hit him in like four hits and killed him. But yeah, same thing happens. Every single time I like go to initiate, I get ice path. I got ice path like three times during that fight, and it just stops all my illusions from doing anything. So I wasn't really able to rampage this game extremely hard. Like I still got a ton of kills, but I wasn't able to just like wipe team fights with my gold advantage like a typical carry would have, just because they had the right heroes to counter me. All you need is AoE stuns. Jakiro is amazing against him. So he didn't even have any armor items, that's why I hit him so hard. He had four armor on Alchemist, so me right-clicking the guy does a ton. I didn't really want to carry a TP scroll this game either because I was pretty limited on item slots anyway, so I just decided to play a little greedy and, and not have any. Stretching. So from here, uh, we can take Aegis, we can go push again. We have a really big advantage, uh, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, we have a pretty ridiculous advantage. This is like a huge gold advantage. If they didn't have such good hero counters against Chaos Knight, we would have won some of those other fights and the game would be over, but it isn't. And again, I don't. I decided that I didn't want to pick up the Aegis. Um, I think it's definitely best on Storm in this circumstance, especially because he went for a uh, Orchid, I believe. Yeah, he's got an Orchid and a Sheep, so definitely better for him to have the Aegis. I'm unlikely to die, despite me have, uh, despite the fact that I have been dying. Um, I think I should be the one to just tank things up, and he can respawn and come back and fight more. Regeneration. Critting decently. Unfortunately, I was farming very far away from my allies, so I have to sprint on over here. On the bright side, Jakiro is 100% dead, which is awesome. And they use RP. What this basically means is it is cleanup time. Instead of just being constantly initiated on, they used everything else on other people, and they ended up surviving, being alive for the next stage. So this was pretty fun. That fight felt good. I was like, hey, I just show up. I can stun a guy. His abilities are on cooldown. I don't have to pop BKB. Just have a nice time, you know? Now they have four dead heroes, so... Radiance middle tower is under attack. 
Radiant structures are fortified. Radiant's middle tower has fallen. If you guys uh, want to see what my cosmetics are, Highness Radiant's is really important. These are the t-shirt from TI. Um, I'm not using the weapon from TI, I use the Dark Ruin Crusher here. And this is a a mount from one of the sets. So, I have so many cool Chaos Knight items, I promise. I'm gonna BKB this because I knew they were going to initiate on me shortly. And now that they're all dead again, I should be able to ulti here and just get a big amount of damage output. And as you can see, my illusions are really, really tanky despite taking nuke damage, so there's not really a whole lot they can do to slow me down. This actually gives me a ton of tower damage, it really does. Like, look how much, look how fast I kill those towers. It's not too bad to just use your illusions for pushing sometimes like this, because especially when they have this many stuns, like, very often I wouldn't be able to disable them, or um, they would just be getting disabled anyway, so. Radiant's Ancient is under attack. So we've ended up just kind of pushing through and ended up winning, so. This is one way that you can play Chaos Knight. And again, to just summarize, fight early and get a ton of kills. Um, and preferably make sure you have mana to be able to do so. I didn't go back to the fountain once unless I died. So I was constantly on the map. I got more last hits than the Alchemist did. My GPM was pretty darn good at 606, and we got a lot of kills. Uh, it partially helped that we had a mid ganker that was pretty darn useful for ganking. So for example, on the top lane, I could throw a stun and attack Magnus, and then he could come forward and do some magic burst too. But you could do this with any mid hero. Any mid hero that has a nuke or a ranged disable or anything. It can be a nuke or a disable because I already have a disable on Chaos Knight. So just having that stun option as a Chaos Knight is really, really nice and opens up a lot of possibilities. So in the future, I would have gone Scotty instead of the... Um, instead of the Satanic. If you go Armlet instead of Vanguard, I strongly recommend a, a Heart immediately afterwards so that you can keep your HP regen up after team fights. So if you go Armlet, definitely go Heart. If you go Vanguard, I would say Scotty or Satanic, depending on how many stuns they are. But definitely always get a BKB fairly fast because um, almost always they're going to have Disables and you're going to be in the melee of them and you need to be Magic Immune. So that's the item build. That's Chaos Knight. You can still play him despite not having a Wisp. It's possible. You just need to snowball from kills a lot and do a lot of early fighting. You need to take it advantage of your skill set and get disables off and catch people that are out of position. Support TP should also happen because you have a good ranged disable with uh, Reality Rift into stun. So that's Chaos Knight. Uh, I won't be making another video of him for a very long time because I find the hero boring and uh, frankly he is not that amazing right now because of the Wisp nerf. So um, there's generally better carries that you can play honestly but he's it is nice to have a stun and he's very mobile in lane so those are his benefits. So that is Chaos Knight. Thanks everyone for watching and I will see you guys tomorrow. Bye.